the letter of understanding. It's the same, same thing. thing. There you <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Either every step of the way, every time, it's going to be the same thing over and over. You just serve a notice of understanding and intent, a claim of right, and serve notice of deregistration. No, I was going to ask you, do you know of anyone here in Ontario who is driving around with an unregistered vehicle and has managed to... Use the proper words. <laughs> what is the proper word? You have you're traveling in an automobile or you're traveling in a private conveyance. And yes, there are people doing it. I actually put the, the sign in the back of my car that you suggested, uh, not for hire, private conveyance. Huh? That's good. <laughs> I haven't stopped yet. But. Well, serve your notice. And the other thing is, if you're out there in a vehicle or in an automobile and it has no plate whatsoever, they do have the color of right to stop you to ensure it is not stolen. So you, want, you don't want to try to fly under the radar. You're flying right through the radar saying, hey, I'm friendly here. Don't shoot at me. And if you do, here's my fee schedule. Na na na. <laughs> so you have a plate on there so they know who you are so that if they punch that in, they at least know who you are and they know your status. Otherwise, you're just inviting the conflict and you don't want to do that. You want to take the moral high ground. But you have to register if your vehicle is for business then. Yes, if you are making money on that highway because it is publicly owned property, for the very same reason they can't stop you from traveling on it without a license, they can demand that you do have one if you're making money off of it. And I think that's the way it should be. Otherwise, you would have corporations ripping that, that thing up and just leaving devastation behind. What's the new license plates I've seen on your website? Is that, that's the, that's the free man plate, yeah. And, and that, that's what you would put on your vehicle? Yeah, on my automobile. <laughs> Can we get them from you? We are looking at doing one of these, but it's not a matter of just putting this plate on. You have to go through the process of making sure it's an unregistered automobile. You have to serve notice. You have to make your claim. If you've gone through that, then we would end up making sure that you have one of these plates. You can choose your numbers. It gets registered in there so no one else can choose those numbers. And then if we monitor you going through this process, what we would do is send you a little metallic sticker, kind of like your registration stickers, so that the cops would know that not only has this person gone through this, this process, but they've got a witness in the form of a notary public and we're done. We can't even touch them. Because uh, otherwise you're gonna, it's going to be abused. And it, one of the worst things you, you could do harm to this movement is to have people come out, start abusing it, young kids, and then uh, the, people would cry for a change. And they would cry for a change. Trying abuse, like the yeah. abuse of the handicap sticker. Yeah. And, you know, the freedom is a result of greater, accepting greater responsibility. So it's a matter of you're not going to be able to get away from it without that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because they're using the money to invest and get back the investment. And we have no say over that. I mean, it just happens. Of course you do. That's what you just said. Typically speaking, we don't know. You've never tried, have you? As long as you're not in the court. That's the only reason you have no say is you've never found your voice. You find your voice, you will find they have to respond. They're your fiduciary agent. They have to accept your directives. Okay. Now, the uh, letter of um, understanding and so forth, for each situation has to be crafted. Call it a notice. A letter can be ignored. Okay. But it has to be crafted differently for each situation. You can't just blankly have one notice. Uh, I would agree with that because every situation is going to be different, but you can craft a, a fairly comprehensive one that should be able to cover just about anything you think you might have to deal with. So it's fine that information to actually have it jotted down on paper. I'm, I'm waiting to see. What sort? The information that's crafting this notice. I'm trying to find the, information, the words to say to put into it. Again, it's going to be your understanding. So. I do have it in my book, but your understanding, your notice of understanding, it better be something that you can articulate and defend in a proper court of law. Otherwise, they're going to catch you with your foot in your mouth, and you're just going to look silly. Yeah. It's simple as saying, I realize that whatever, and just what you notice and understand, you're making a statement of that. Well, and you, and I, you're putting it forward. I'm saying this is where I stand. This is what I, under, this is what I believe. It's as simple as that. Essentially, this is what I firmly believe, and this is where I'm standing. And you can't move me just by ordering me because we're both equal. 
You go stand over there if you want. That's your belief. I'm standing over here. And the intent is if you come and move me then... Yes. And the claim of right. The claim of right supports my actions to engage in defending myself. So if they do come, uh, they can't charge me. And they can't really lay claim that they're the ones with the moral high ground. And that's what it really is about. You, you get the moral high ground, you look at them and say, what it, we can't fight, sorry. Just putting them on notice, basically. Yeah. I put my lawyer on notice. Like, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you wouldn't believe after, like, three weeks of phone calls and no calls returned. Hmm. Typed up the letter, faxed it in. You are now on notice hmm. that if I don't have an answer from you by close of business, so I think they gave me 24 hours, I will be taking this further. There's my intent, and I had every intention of following it up. Oh yeah, no, notice counts. They can't. It's it's information presented that they can't claim ignorance of, and the letter they can. Once you uh, have a claim of right, is there like a uh, rules of, of delay or something that acceptable? That okay from from like once I have my claim of right, like is there a certain that like after ten days or so, like okay that's final. There's no response or something. So that, that's no. Once you have a claim of right, you have a claim of right. But then what you want to do is take that and you want to be able to stop the cops from coming at you or the government or whatever. So you're seeking a um, estoppel, permanent estoppel by acquiescence. The evidence, you take this to a notary public, you say, here's my claim of right, this is what the entire process is, no one has disputed it every chance they've had, and you get a notice of estoppel. And if the cops try stopping you, you show them that, and they are barred from bringing any action. Before that, you, 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 should, have, like, you should give notice and have a certain respectable delay to get a response. Yes, you have to give them fair fair opportunity yeah. to respond. Okay, so is it like a... 14 days is standard and good and no one can bitch about it. All right. Okay. Is that something you print in the local paper or the government? There's a number of ways to serve notice and again that's in the in the book everything uh, personal delivery you can post it on a, on their door you can serve it publicly uh, by way of uh, in the newspaper. If you can put it in the newspaper, that's always best because part of this is to stand against these people in a public manner so that people know that they're not alone and that let them know you're not scared. So, yeah, if you can get it in the paper, do that. But how is that serving the notice? That's no public notice. It's not that direct notice to notice someone. What if they don't read the paper and they don't see anything? They're not my fault. That's their fault for not reading the paper. It's public knowledge. So you just keep a copy and there's your card back? Yeah, but bear in mind, if you're thinking this, then you know, I mean, right there, you don't feel that you have served notice. So then you would have an obligation to take other steps to ensure that they do have it. The purpose of that notice in the paper is uh, it's not to get away with making sure that you can claim they got notice, but they didn't actually. You're not trying to get anything over on anyone. You just want that notice seen from even more people. Two questions. No, one at a time, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> the, the one I, have, I have one question that relates to the people in your car. So, is there uh, could the uh, could an agent have any force, or could they do anything if uh, your re your vehicle is not registered, uh, reg yeah, registered, and you don't have a driver's license, and you just make sure that it's okay? Uh, you're not a driver, so the people around you in the car can they can, can anything happen to them or what they will try to do? What they will try to do is they'll try to say, "Oh, you're a passenger." A passenger legally, if you look at any conveyance, there's three uh, three statuses. There's the owner, the driver. Yeah, the owner, driver, actually four, passenger and guest. Okay. A passenger is someone who is on there and has paid to be there. Yeah. So if I'm just in your car and we're going down the street and they try saying, oh, are you a passenger? And you say yes. Now they will claim the right to affect you because of this supposed commercial transaction taking place. You tell them, no, I'm not a passenger. I haven't paid anyone anything. I'm just a guest and I'm exercising my common law rights. That's very important to know. Okay. Yeah. okay. Right. <laughs> All right. Second thing, if you don't mind. No, one more. We're all cold and everyone wants to, uh, we're winding up. Okay, one more. Okay, last one. Okay. Uh, the question is, uh, if, if we have two, 200 farmers who want to start a cannery and we borrow money for building and equipment, and use the, can we use the money from birth certificate for the loan? Are you engaging in a profit-making activity? It would be. No. Okay. Thank you.
the concept of profit goes against, uh, uh, it's not a benefit to your society if you're engaging in this for profit. Okay, so if profit, then no. <laughs> Rob, okay, uh, you, you were mentioning something last week, uh, 